What's poppin', homies? It's your favorite homegirl, Gossip Girl. Let's get into this commentary. Hey guys, so today I want to talk to you about the Sherry Johnson story. Now this story, when I read it through and through, I it left me feeling some type of way. Because, you know, when you are a mom, you're supposed to protect your, parents, your, your kids, right? Um... I don't want to give too much away. I just want you to hear this story that I'm going to be talking to you about. Okay, so her name is Sherry Yvonne Johnson. She's an American activist who advocates for restrictions on child marriage in the United States. Okay, child marriage should not be happening at all here. But let's get into her story. Johnson successfully campaigned for title restrictions on child marriage in her home state of Florida. Prior to 2018, pregnant children of any age in Florida could get married with a judge's permission. Now, with this, the passage of the 2018 legislation, children under 17 are prohibited from getting married. Let's see, I didn't know that. Um, I didn't know that if you're not at the legal age that the judge can get permission, you know, for you to get married and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so her early life and first miscarriage. Johnson grew up in Tampa, Florida. She was an only child and her household consisted of her, her mother, and her mother's husband. They live in the personage of their conservative Pentecostal church. Beginning at age nine, Johnson was repeatedly raped by the bishop and deacon of her church. Johnson was also raped by her mother's husband. She became pregnant as a result of rape at the age of 10. The pregnancy was not recognized until she was seven months along in gestation. Mm. My goodness. Johnson's mother did not support or believe her statements that she was raped and did not accompany her to the hospital when it was time to deliver the baby. Can you imagine a 10-year-old child going through labor? Pregnant, okay? Could you, a 10-year-old child? Her mother, oh, <clears throat> anyway. Mm -mm -mm. Johnson's mother arranged for her to marry the deacon who had raped her, Alfonso Talbert, so that he could avoid criminal charges. What kind of mother is that? Here's your child. Your only child. Your baby. Okay. She was already being taken advantage of at the age of nine years old. By the bishop and the deacon of the church. And then her mother doesn't believe her. That her husband also took advantage of her. Like, come on. And now this girl is 10 years old at the time. And she's pregnant. And so, her mother didn't go her to the hospital. But, she arranged for her to marry the deacon. Okay? So, he could avoid criminal charges. She did not protect her child in any way. Do you understand? She did not protect this child in any way. At the at times, 16 and 17 year old minors could get married with parental permission in Florida, and children of any age could be married with the permission of a county judge if pregnancy was involved. To me, that's that's just all wrong. That is just all types of wrong. While the first judge refused to license the marriage of a child so young. Though it was legal 
a second judge agreed to grant the license and Johnson was married to Talbert on March 29th, 1971 at the, at the age of 11. Okay. At the age of 11. Married. Mm -mm -mm. Sherry Johnson had six children by the time she was 17 years old. Let me read that again for you. Sherry Johnson had six children by the time she was 17 years old and had dropped out of school at the ninth grade to raise them. At age 17, she sought help from the Legal Aid Society, which gave her $75 to pay for an attorney for her divorce. At the age of 19, after her first divorce, Johnson remarried a man, 18 years her senior. Now, together they had three children, okay? They were married for 26 years before separating in 2002. This is where her activism comes in. Johnson published a book detailing her experience as a child bride, Forgiving the Unforgivable. She is opposed to child marriage on the basis that children cannot enter into other legal contracts. Johnson stated, you can't get a job, you can't get a car, you can't get a license, you can't sign a lease. So why allow someone to marry when they're still so young? They can't do any of those things, but the judge, with his permission, will grant it at that time can't sign a lease, can't get a job, can't do really nothing because you're a child. But yet the judge in Florida at that time, if pregnancy was involved, they would grant the marriage. Johnson also believes that permitting child marriages allows rapists to escape the legal consequences of their crimes by marrying their victims. Speaking on how she was forced to marry the man who raped her, Johnson said, no one actually protected her. No one protected her at all. No one, not even her own mother. Her mother brought her into this world and she did not even protect her own daughter. But they protected him by putting the handcuffs on me instead of putting the handcuffs on him. And he was the rapist. Even her mother protect, protected the deacon so that he could marry her because she's pregnant and he won't go to jail. If this doesn't make you mad, I don't know what will. Now, in 2012, Johnson began to lobby the Florida state legislature to make child marriage illegal. Johnson initially faced opposition or disbelief from lawmakers. But some lawmakers incorrect, incorrectly asserting to her that child marriage, such as hers, was not legal in Florida. What the heck is going on? You mean the lawmakers didn't even agree with her on this? Or that her case, I mean, why would they even fight her on this? I didn't even know this was going on, to be honest with you guys. I really didn't. If you guys know, knew about this, what's happening around that time, please let me know in the comment section. And what do you know of child marriage in the United States? Because I did not think that was something that happened here. I thought that was something that happened in other countries. I, didn't have, I had no clue that this happened here in the United States. I had no clue. However, Johnson's ideas gained traction with lawmakers over time. After the Florida Senate voted unanimously to ban child marriage, okay, Senator Lizbeth 
called Johnson the reason for the bill. The proposed bill on child marriage was amended, however, to allow 17-year-olds to marry. Seven-year-olds can marry in the state of Florida regardless of a pregnancy is involved, as long as their intended partner is less than two years older than them. Such couples will also have to take premarital um, preparation course as well as sign an affidavit that the marriage is not coerced. If a pregnancy is involved, the couple must receive additional counseling. Okay, this amendment legislation again passed unanimously in the Senate. In the House, support was near unanimous with George Moretis, the lone dissenter, George stated, I'm particularly forced, excuse me, focus on the pregnancy aspect of it. I don't want the message to be, it's better to not get married. On March 23rd, 2018, this legislation was signed by Governor Rick Scott. Now, despite the lack of an outright ban on child marriage in Florida, Johnson stated that she was pleased with the bill, saying, I can deal with the line of age 17 with all the requirements. While she was happy with the legislative victory in Florida, Johnson indicated that her activism against child marriage was not over. She stated, my mission is for the world for the children all over the world, she said, is not just Florida. It's for the children everywhere. When I first read about this, I was like, what in God's name is going on here? And I'm pissed at her mother. Okay? What, first of all, so this is why... This is why, this is why I don't believe or I don't praise these deacons and these pastors of the church, okay? Because they have the, oh, they be doing some wild things. And I know some people may not like what I'm saying, but it's the truth. It's the truth. You know, I don't think child marriage should be happening anywhere. But it happens. But it happens. And even in these pictures, her wedding pictures, you know, the the guy, the man's face is blurred out, or whatever the case may be. And that may be because she don't want to get sued, or whatever the case may be. But she's telling her story. Okay? And this happened in Florida. And as I'm talking about this, this little girl, okay, was taken advantage at the age of nine, okay, at the deacon in the past of her church, Pentecostal. And then her mother's husband took advantage of her. And the mother didn't even believe her own child. Let me tell you something. My daughters come to me and say, this will happen, and so-and-so did this. They're going to read about me. And. The 18 year old. He was 18 years older than her. Church deacon. No, I'm sorry. It says here. Sherry Johnson was just a child. When her then 18 year old church deacon. Deacon into her home while her parents and her sisters were out at church and violated her. But I thought she was the only child. See, I'm I'm looking at two different articles here. Hmm. 
pretty little girl. She said, all you had to do was walk down the steps from the church and you'll walk into our kitchen, she said. And that's where he took advantage of me. I woke up with him on top of me many times. No longer able to to turn to religion. Johnson turned to the only person in her life she knew she would be able to confide in. And it was her mother. I didn't understand what really took place. I did tell my mother. I had no idea what words to really use. And she she said, detailing how difficult it was for a second grader to understand what happened to her. The only thing that came to mind is, I remember I said, Mom, the deacon messed with me. And her mother didn't believe her. So Sherry Johnson, you know, she was expecting comfort and some action to to be, you know, to happen. Johnson soon saw how quickly that feeling turned to denouncing what what had been uttered. She said, no, he did not. He don't do that kind of stuff. I said, mom. He did. Sherry recalled telling her mother of the horrific experience. Unfortunately, the only person in the world she thought she could trust did not trust her. Johnson's mother again brushed off her own daughter's experience saying, and she told me that's not true. My mom, for some reason, she seemed to blame her for what happened. This soon turned to public humiliation at Johnson's mother was spread false rumors about her own daughter to the entire church congregation. She told other people that I was fast. She would get up in that church and tell all the members, don't believe my daughter. She felt humiliated, but more so disappointed. I was a sacrifice to cover up what he did. So in the ensuing months, Johnson found herself more and more isolated to the point the nine-year-old considered running away from home but had nowhere to go. It was then she discovered even more tragic news. She was pregnant. When social workers became involved, her mother pressured her to keep the father's identity a secret and instead sent her away with the deacon. And she and the church leader made their way from Tampa to Miami. He pulled over and once again took advantage of her, even at seven months pregnant. Mm -mm -mm. Thousands of miles away from home in her rapist custody Johnson gave birth alone without her mother showing up for the birth of her own granddaughter Mm -mm -mm. was it horrifying having a child so young yes it was she was only nine years old when this was happening it was devastating It was a situation in my life that I didn't know exactly what to do. I was still a child myself. Two years later, she was forced to marry her rapist. And to make matters worse, it was in the same church she had attended all her life. And her own mother even made the wedding cake, dress and veil. Hmm. Sherry Johnson had no one to to care for her. She had no one to love her. 
and she had no one to protect her. And I feel bad that this even happened to her. Mm, 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 mm. And I had no idea this kind of stuff was happening in the U.S. Yes, I know things like this happen, you know, in different countries and stuff. But I had no idea this stuff happens here in the U.S. It happened in the U.S. I used to hear a whole lot of stuff about Florida. A whole lot of stuff about Florida. Mm -mm -mm. Her own mother didn't protect her. She protected the deacon, you know, and the person that did what he did to her daughter, but she didn't protect her own child. Mm -mm -mm. So, you guys, um, let me know in the comment section if you heard of this story and what are your thoughts about this. I know it's a lot, but I just felt like I just wanted to talk about it because it needs to be talked about, you know. Um, like I said, I didn't know this stuff was happening here in the U.S. And this was in 1971. Okay, well, I wasn't even born then, but this was in 1971. Could you imagine? Being nine or ten years old and giving birth? What? What? So that means, you know, she had to, I guess she was starting, you know, she was, you know, having her monthly and stuff. But my goodness, that just, just broke my heart. This whole story just breaks my heart. Mm -mm -mm. But you know what's so sad, though? There's mothers out there who are just like Sherry's mother. Oh, yeah. There's mothers out there who are just like Sherry's mother to this day. They won't protect their children, but they'll protect the child's abuser. The ones that abuse their child, her child, they protect them, but they won't protect their own child. So I feel that Sherry's mom was screwed up in the head from her mother, okay? I think this is a learned behavior from her mom because not once did they mention Sherry's father, okay? So I think this is learned behavior from her mother and she did it to her daughter. Mm-mm-mm. Let me know in the comment section, what do you feel? How do you feel about this story? What do you think of it? All right, and I'll talk to you guys later.